When I was in my pre-teens, I started having dreams of these things that would happen later in real life. They were usually just banal things like the order and colors of cars at an intersection, new billboards on the main road, a sentence or three spoken later in the week, very ordinary things like that. After a year or so of these things, at least once a month, I largely ignored and accepted them as commonplace occurrences that quite a few people have. In my mid-teens, about 14 or 15, I started to have extremely vivid dreams where I had no recollection of myself or anyone else I knew in any way whatsoever, some of them seeming to last years depending on how long I slept. In them I answer to a different name look different, have a different history, different hobbies, you get it. These dreams are so vivid and often and so convincing that when I wake up from them I'd be confused as to who I was before getting out of bed. I read that these kind of dreams are also somewhat common and that I shouldn't be too terribly spooked by them if they do turn bad, which they eventually did. Some of these I can't even bring myself to talk about because they were so horrific. Others were less so, but emotionally devastating in other ways. Once I was a man whose toddler was flattened by a minivan in front of him. Another time I was a girl who was permanently disabled in an accident and could no longer play the sport that she had dedicated herself to her entire life. After a while, I got used to these dreams too, and started to kind of look forward to them. When I was 16, both types of dreams were still occurring. I mostly had normal run-of-the-mill dreams. These were rare in comparison. I stayed up for a while longer than usual one day, and when I dozed off, it was into one of the most horrific dreams. In it, I was a girl in her late teens or early twenties who was wearing a really uncomfortable bra. The dream started with her riding in the back of a truck, making friendly small talk with a guy she didn't know very well as he drove, and they were both lightly flirting. He took a wrong turn. She leaned forward and told him that he was supposed to go straight, and he replied, I'm picking up my friend, remember? I thought I told you that. She was pretty sure he hadn't, but she didn't want to come off as a nut, so she ignored it. He kept driving further and further out into the country, and her gut kept protesting the situation, and she kept wiping sweat off her hands. But there was nowhere for her to go if she got out of the car. There were fields for kilometers dotted with massive ranch homes too few and far apart to make it to unless they stopped right beside one. They eventually pulled into the driveway of one of the gorgeous manor-like homes and they both got out of the car. By this time she was near puking from anxiety and her legs were trembling up to her thighs. The guy was still plucky, and she tried to keep up an act, but it was glaringly obvious that something was off with her. The guy said nothing on it and walked to the door with her and rang the bell. It was answered by an average height, average weight guy with orange freckles all over his face and chest, and short likewise hair, butt naked except for a towel around his waist and thighs. He looked a little startled at the arrival of a girl and what's-his-face, but invited them inside, gave them drinks, and left them in his living room while he finished dressing. 
I don't remember the exact transition from waiting on the couch to essentially endless assaults. But the rest of the dream was so insanely fucked up that I don't want to and I doubt that I could write it down. If you can think of any not completely outrageous form of both assault and sexual assault that could be performed by one or two assailants on a woman, it probably happened over that period of a little over a week in dream time. It was so vivid that when I woke up I was shocked that I couldn't taste blood in my mouth and that I was fine, and it took me much longer than usual to work out my way back into my life. I didn't leave home that day, and when I wasn't paying attention to my stride, I adopted a limp in my right leg. In the dream, it had suffered branding and mutilation, especially of the foot. I had the dream twice after the first time, not remembering it while in it, and my reaction to it wasn't any better with repeats. It was brutal, but I wrote it off as an especially appalling, horrific version of Not Me Dreams and I didn't brood over it for longer than it took to transition back to regular life. The third time, I told myself I would go to a sleep therapist if the dream happened again, and it didn't. About a year and a half after the last time I dreamt it, there was a big end-of-season party about 20 minutes out of town that a lot of people I knew were going to. I made plans, and on the evening of the party, I ended up in the back seat of a truck driven by a friend of a friend I had met briefly a few times before, and hung out with once. He seemed pretty well-liked, and he was a fun person to be around, so I didn't feel weird about being alone in the truck with him, though he insisted I sit in the back with tinted windows because he didn't want cops pulling us over if they saw me and guessed that I was underage. We talked about fairly trivial things, and I kept adjusting a bra that I had outgrown but never tossed out. At this point, I was starting to feel strange, similar to the feeling you get when you know you're forgetting something as you leave your house but you can't place what. I began to frown visibly, and even though he kept glancing at me in the back mirror to continue the conversation, and it was light enough for him to see me, he didn't say anything. Five minutes later, he took a wrong turn, at the exact same bend in my dream. I was almost flattened by both deja vu and panic at this, and it took me a moment to recover, lean forward, and say in a kind of pissy voice, Hey, you were supposed to turn back there. I'm picking up my friend, remember? I thought I told you that. Was his response. I practically pissed myself in fear, and the pad of my right foot actually began to ache. I knew he hadn't told me he was going to pick up a friend. And I told him so, and he apologized and said he meant to, but he must have forgot. I would have gladly opened the door and flung myself out, but it was a two-door truck and both doors were in the front. He kept talking, and I tried to contribute to the conversation. We drove further and further out, the houses growing larger and fewer, and I told myself that as soon as I saw a car... I would shoot forward, jerk the wheel hard enough right, and drive us into the ditch. I would say I saw a dog pass in front of the car, and I would break the window and crawl out. At the same time, I was trying to convince myself that it was a coincidence, and I was massively overreacting. No car passed us. We pulled into a driveway of a home which was gorgeous, but it wasn't the same as in my dream. And as I got out of the car, I could hardly stand from the fear. We got out of the truck, and the guy started toward the house, still chattering, and I told him I wanted to stay back, because while we had been driving, I'd gotten sick, and I didn't think I could make it up the front steps. He chuckled and offered to carry me up. I refused, and I told him that I'd just puke sushi up on him if he tried, that I'd be up once my stomach settled. He seemed a little affronted, but rang the bell and went inside without me. I pulled out my phone and started taking pictures of everything I conceivably could from my position. 
the door with the address number, a landscape of the front yard, which was beautiful. His truck, anything that could be used as a locator identifier. I got on the house's Wi-Fi with no password and posted everything to Facebook. I still have no idea what would have happened if his Wi-Fi had been locked. Acquaintance and his friend exit the house, but his friend is dressed rather than in a towel and he had darker hair than I had imagined in my dream. The freckles were down to a T. I had no emotional or physical reaction. I transcended fear and passed into an almost disassociative state by now. I interrupted my friend as he invited me into the house and I angled my phone towards him. I was closer to the foot of the stairs than before. I said, your house is amazing. I hope you don't mind that I posted pictures of it on Facebook. You should get a professional photographer out here. Freckles' eyes went wide and they went back inside with hardly a mumble in reply. My guy came back out alone, close to half an hour later, after I heard a muffled argument from somewhere inside. He hardly looked at me as he went down the steps, saying, We're going. He's not coming. I got into the truck with him, sitting in the passenger seat, and we drove back to the main road. He didn't speak to me at all the entire way back. He kicked me out on the road he had originally turned off of and told me to go get my own ride to the party. I called a taxi and was home within the hour. I still have no idea what to believe about this. I haven't had a premonition like dream since that day, not even of the cars at an intersection. I had a recurring dream that may have saved my life from being tortured and probably murdered. A month after my grandfather passed away, sometime in April, my husband and I moved into a house that was built in 1930. It was previously owned by an elderly man who in his prime loved his yard and took care of the landscaping. My grandfather in his prime as well was an award-winning master gardener and had award-winning roses of all types. He had taught me a few things here and there, and because of him I enjoy working in the yard and making it beautiful. When my husband and I moved into this house, the flowers, grass, bushes, and roses were all in terrible shape. In front of the walkway leading to the front door connecting to the sidewalk was a trellis with climbing roses covering it. It had potential to be beautiful, but not being taken care of in years, I didn't think it would have a chance to look beautiful again. I was determined to fix it. I read books, looked online, etc. Finally, one night I had a dream. My grandfather was at my new house taking me in to teach me each type of flower and bush telling me exactly how to bring the garden back to life. Where to clip, where to add plant foods, everything. Then we got onto the roses on the trellis. He showed me exactly what to do to make it grow, make the roses climb higher, and where to tie the stems to train the vines to grow how I wanted. The most important instruction he gave me and told me over and over was to wait until it had rained for two straight days. The next morning, I woke up happy because I felt like I had just spent the whole day with my grandpa, who I missed so much. Two days straight, rain did happen, and I did everything word for word that he had told me to do, and my yard was beautiful. People would tell me they purposely walked by my yard because it was so nice to look at. Thanks to my grandfather, he helped a sad yard look beautiful again and taught me more about plants and flowers than I ever expected to know. Three.
I personally never believed in these kinds of things until I had my own experience. When I was 16 years old, I went out riding quads with my brothers and my father. This trip ended in disaster when my father and another rider collided head-on in a wash, a small creek in the desert, killing my dad instantly. Over the next three to four days, I would cry myself to sleep at night. One of those nights, I can't remember which, I had a dream where I walked out of my room and standing there was my father, with his face covered in bruises and some blood, with a confused look. I was speechless and frozen when he looked at me and asked, Where is everyone? I instantly broke into tears and woke myself up sobbing. I ran downstairs to tell someone and only found my mom and brothers in the house. Everyone else had gone home. The crazy part of this is, I couldn't have known what his face looked like because I was too scared and sad to look at it when we saw his body in the hospital after they declared him deceased. And also, we had a bunch of family staying and visiting us constantly for a few days, and that morning... Before I woke up, they all returned home. So I couldn't have known they were gone before I had the dream. Four. During college, I used to travel a lot on weekends between my hometown and my college, which is a 90 mile drive. One weekend, an acquaintance of mine from high school also decided to drive home in a separate car. On Saturday night, I had a very vivid dream where this infant girl came up to me and said, Please take care of my sister. And showed me an image of a car crash on the highway consisting of a silver Corolla, which was my friend's car, and a black Ford Explorer. The next morning, I immediately called her and told her about that dream, and I asked her if she had a sister because I've only ever met her brothers. Her response was that, well, my mom had a stillborn girl. And then I asked how old she would have been today, and she said she would have been five. It immediately clicked that the infant from my dream was her lost sister. I talked her into driving back with me the next night, and we watched the news only to see an identical image to what I saw in my dream, only this time it was only a black Ford Explorer and not two cars. This still freaks me out to this day. Five. I have weird dreams a lot that come true. I had a recurring dream about once or twice a month for years. I was 13 or 14 when the dream first happened. In the dream, I'm at a house in the middle of the woods with a group of people I don't recognize. And as it turns out, they're my current friends and acquaintances, but I hadn't met all of them yet. And I get up off the couch to get more drinks for everyone. I go to the kitchen and open the fridge grab two drinks, close the fridge, and turn to go back to the living room. As I turn, I get a sharp pain in my stomach, and then it rips upwards to my chest. A guy had come in the back door, which leads to the kitchen, and stabbed me, basically gutted me. I fall to the floor and can see into the living room from under the kitchen table. I watch him start shooting my friends as everything fades to black. I started telling my friends this when I had the dream again in high school, but before I could finish, they each added to it from their perspective. I got up and went to the kitchen, didn't come back, loud noises, screams, then they wake up. Senior year, we were driving to a cabin none of us had ever been to before. We pulled up, saw the house, and left. 
Literally, we went like this. Here we are. Oh, hell no. And that was the end of that. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the show. If you have a story to share, send us an email, like us on Facebook, share, like, and subscribe.